Hi there, I'm Ben and welcome to my full platinum guide for Watch Dogs Legion. This video is going to be split into two parts. Firstly, a roadmap or breakdown of what you can expect when going for the platinum. Then a full trophy guide for each individual trophy in the game. Basically, every trophy guide you could want for the game in one single video. Just imagine what you'd expect a written trophy guide to be like. It's one of those in video version. And of course, this video can be used for the achievement equivalent for Xbox. Just omit the Platinum Trophy, obviously. Another thing I'll just mention before we get started is that there are timestamps in the description for each individual trophy. So if you're looking for a specific trophies guide, then you can just skip ahead. Right, let's get started with the Platinum Breakdown. Let's just go over some numbers quickly. Firstly, difficulty, there's basically none. This game is really simple and can be played on easy, so we're talking a 2 out of 10 here. Number of playthroughs, just the one. Time to Platinum, I'm going to be conservative with this one and say about 45 to 50 hours, but that can be reduced if you're efficient with your time. Watch Dogs Legion is a Ubisoft game, so like all other Ubisoft games, there aren't any missable trophies. Once the story is finished, you can just still carry on playing. This is obviously a big bonus, but there are a few things you'll want to be aware of that will make your Platinum process a simple one. Firstly, there are some potentially glitched trophies at the time of making this video. Basically any of the location based ones, so darts, drinks and paste ups. These are kind of collectibles, but there's no way to track them in game, and they can glitch when you switch characters. So it's best just to leave them all until the end, and then do them in one go, and this is the reason the time to Platinum is a little bit longer. Right, the first step to Platinum is to finish the story and the side missions. Just a few things you'll want to be aware of here. Firstly, do not choose permadeath. This can cause a lot of frustration if one of your operatives dies and you need them for a trophy. There are a lot of character related trophies and certain characters can be quite rare. Next, during the initial chapter select screen after the prologue, see if one of the characters is a video game designer. If so, pick them. This can save quite a bit of messing around later on. If not, then keep an eye out for one while you're playing. You need to recruit one and they're kind of a rare spawn. I have found a decent place to find them though, but I'll cover that in the individual trophy guide later on. Next, don't spend money or ETO at all. You need to spend 100,000 on clothes, but again, you'll want to do this in one go so that you don't glitch the trophy. Keep an eye out for upgrade points as you're playing. These appear as green squares on your map. You'll need a lot of points to fully upgrade everything, 1300 in total. Each one you find will give you 10 points. Collecting them as you come across them just means less running around at the end of the game. The same goes for audio logs and relics as well. You only need 50 audio logs for the trophy and you'll get 30 or so during the story and side missions. While you only need 15 relics and you get 12 of those during the story. Audio logs show up as speakers on your map and relics look like little delivery boxes. Just grab all of those you can find as well. The final thing you want to keep an eye out for is money or ETO. It appears as a circle with a line through it on your map. Like I said, you'll need 100,000 for a single trophy. You should be able to reach that after doing everything else if you always pick it up as you find it. After finishing the story and side missions, it'll be onto the miscellaneous character based trophies. There are quite a lot of these. You get most of the characters you need by turning all of the boroughs in London defiant, which is very, very helpful. These are the red symbols on the map, three in each borough. So go and do all of those as well. You need to turn every borough defiant for a trophy anyway. You can keep an eye out for these red markers while doing story and side missions as well because some of them are quite close to story and side mission objectives but most of them are very simple anyway. They simply kill an enemy or hack something very very simple. Then to finish up you'll want to visit each drinking location, having a drink and playing some darts. Visit every paste up location and spend all of the 100,000 ETO on clothes. These are all the potentially glitched trophies and you'll want to do them all in one go with one single character. And before you do try and do these trophies, make sure you back up your save as well. So that's it for the breakdown, very straightforward. This is the sort of game you can just play at your own leisure and not really worry too much about trophies as things can be done later on. Just be sure to keep an eye out for the things that I mentioned above and that will speed the process up. So feel free to go and play the game now, then come back here and use the timestamps to find the guides for any of the trophies you may still need afterwards. 
And that's what we're going to do now. I'll tell you how to get every trophy in the game. Basically lots of mini little trophy guides. I'll just warn you there may be spoilers ahead. I won't spoil any major plot points or anything, but you may see some things that you want to experience yourself firsthand. The order I'll be going through the trophies is the same as they'd appear on your PlayStation, and do not forget about the timestamps in the description if you want to just skip around the video. First up is a bunch of story related trophies, I'll just skim over each one and tell you when you should expect to unlock it. You're essentially taking down certain factions for each branch of the story, so it's not necessarily a linear experience, but you will have to complete them all. Basically you can do them in any order. This first one, Brave New World, is for finishing the prologue of the game and probably the first trophy you'll get. This is another story related trophy and you'll get this one after finishing the 404 branch of the story. Ending with the mission Into the Void and thankfully if you die while escaping it still counts. Again story related, this one's for finishing the Clan Kelly story branch, the final mission of that branch is Falling from Grace. You get this one after you complete the SIRS branch, with the final mission there being Barbarians at the Gate. The final branch is the Albion one, the final mission of this one is called London's Protectors, completing this will net you this trophy. And this is the final story related trophy and one you'll get right at the end of the game. Don't worry, once the credits roll after the mission hard reset, you'll be back in action and ready to crack on with the side missions. The Finding Bagley side mission gets added to your mission log straight after the credits. The mission basically involves you going around London photographing certain monuments and locations. You can see which ones you need to photograph from the data part of the menu. I'm not going to show you all the locations here, I have a separate video detailing how to complete this mission. You can find the link in the description below. Change of Heart is the sixth mission in Caitlin Lau's string of side missions. Caitlin will start to hang around the dead sec hideout during the story. Once she does, you can talk to her and start her string of side missions. Most side missions come in pairs, so speak to Caitlin, finish one mission, then the next will start automatically. After that, you'll need to speak to Caitlin again to start the next pair. If she isn't offering any missions when you finish the previous one, just go do something else for a while and come back a little later on. Again, you'll get this trophy after you complete her sixth and final mission. A Roof of Your Head is the sixth side mission in Nout's string of side missions. Like Caitlin Lau from the previous trophy, Nout will join your team during the story and hang around the hideout. Speak to her to start her side missions, again they will come in pairs, so for every two you'll need to go back and speak to her to start the next pair. Just like Caitlin, if she's not offering missions, just go and do something else for a while. This trophy will unlock once you complete her sixth and final mission, Royal Treatment. I have a separate video for that specific mission in the description below. You need to find three mansions and they don't get marked on your map, so that video should help. This is the final trophy that pertains to side missions. You don't have to actually speak to someone to start this string of side missions off, and thankfully there are only two missions in this string, and you'll get the trophy after completing the second Parks and Reclamation. To start these missions off, look for a data pad on the left side of the dead sec hideout and hack it. The missions are for a guy called Hamish, so they'll become available once he joins the cause. To earn this trophy, you need to complete a revenge mission. The only problem with that is that revenge missions are random events. Basically, one of your crew will randomly get kidnapped, and this will start a revenge mission. While these events are random, you can do something to help them along, and that's get people to hate you. Or dead sec at least. If you scan people on the street, you'll see that some of them have a thumbs down and dislike dead sec. When you find one of these, use R1 to potentially recruit them, and then use the Deep Profiler skill on them. You will need to unlock the skill in the Upgrades menu. This will allow you to track their movements and see who their associates are. What you need to do is track one of their associates and go and pay them a visit. Basically, find the associate and kill them. This will instantly make the person hate you, and you can see that in the Recruitment menu. Do this for a few people and wait for the revenge mission to start. It can take a while, so do some other stuff in the meantime. Once it does, simply track the mission, complete it by saving your crew member, and the trophy will be yours. This is an unmissable trophy. Very early in the game, you'll play a mission called Reporting for Duty, where you have to recruit someone to DedSec. Kind of like a tutorial. To earn this trophy, all you have to do is recruit someone to DedSec after that mission. You'll be recruiting a lot of people, so this will happen naturally. 
I suppose this trophy is technically a story related one. You will automatically get this after completing the early story missions Lighter Spark and Clarion Call. These are missions that teach you about turning a borough defiant. By the end of the missions, Camden will be fully defiant and you will unlock the trophy. To continue on from the previous trophy, this one is for making all boroughs defiant. On your map, you'll see three red markers in each borough. These are little mini objectives that help towards turning a borough defiant. Most of them are pretty simple. Usually it's just kill a certain person or destroy a certain drone, hack a certain CTOS server, or take pictures of certain bits of information in an Albion base. When all three are done in any given borough, a mission will start for that borough. Completing that will turn the borough defiant for good. Do this in each borough to earn this trophy. This is a trophy you'll probably earn without trying. While playing, you will die. Or get sent to hospital if you have permadeath switched off. The enemy that killed you will become an adversary. For instance, if you play a mission and you die halfway through, you'll continue the mission with a different character and everything will be the way it was as you died. It's not like a checkpoint, it's a continuation. Enemies will have the same partial health and will remain dead if you've already killed them. The enemy that killed you will have a special tag on them that will now say adversary. Simply neutralize them to earn this trophy. It's a good way to earn a bit of ETO as well, so it's always a good idea to go and kill them if you see them. You may also see adversaries randomly walking down the street, so watch out for them there as well. I think this trophy is pretty self-explanatory. Recruit 20 operatives with different occupations. This is a trophy you can just forget about until the end of the game. You'll be recruiting a lot of people all the time and they'll most of the time have different occupations. If you don't have it by the end, walk down the street scanning people with L1 and look for an occupation you don't have yet, then recruit that person. Simple really. <laughs> recruit a video game designer. Simple right? Not so much. They are a fairly rare spawn. If you're lucky you got one at the initial character selection at the beginning of the game, more than likely though, you didn't. I do have a separate video for this trophy and you can find the link in the description, but just to summarise, go to the Tate Modern in northern part of Suthuk. I found three video game designers while walking around that area. The time of the day doesn't matter by the way. They aren't guaranteed to spawn instantly, so it still may take a while, but it's definitely the best place to find them. Now we're getting to the character specific trophies and the reason you don't want permadeath on. Getting a professional hitman on your team is actually very straightforward. Turn the borough of Nine Elms Defiant and you automatically get one. Once you've done that, you can just get five stealth kills. Any red area of the game will do. Go there and sneak around picking enemies off by strangling them from behind. You don't need to do anything special, it's just a special kill animation specific to professional hitmen or women. They don't need to be done all at once either, just five in total. This is another character specific trophy, this time for the drone expert. Thankfully drone experts are fairly common. You can find them around parks. Alternatively, make the borough of Lambeth defiant and you'll get one automatically. Once you have a drone expert, just start causing havoc with them. Albion guards will start showing up. When they do, simply select the dive bomb skill from the weapon wheel and press R1 while you have an Albion guard selected. This will send a kamikaze drone to take them out. Get five confirmed kills with a dive bomb drone to unlock this trophy. Sometimes the splash damage from a vehicle exploding may kill the Albion Guard and it won't count. Just keep going if this is the case. You'll get it eventually. Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Is yet another character specific trophy. Beekeepers are rare, but you can get one for turning the borough of City of London defiant. Once you have a beekeeper, go to an Albion base or start causing havoc in the street. Either way, when you have an Albion guard in front of you, choose the bee swarm skill from the weapon wheel and press R1 to send the bees their way. Now you actually need 10 kills from the bees and they won't outright kill an enemy. It can take three bee swarms to take an Albion guard down. For that reason, I just suggest softening them up with a bit of gunfire and then send the bees in to finish them off. You guessed it, another character specific trophy. This time you'll need a hacker. You get a hacker automatically during the story. Once you've made Camden Defiant during the mission Clarion Call, you'll recruit a hacker. The reason you need a hacker is that they have the viral hacking ability. Normally you'd hold L1 and press X to hack something. Well with a hacker you can hold X to send out a hacking shockwave so to speak. And everything in the vicinity will get hacked at the same time. 
To get this trophy, you need to hit eight targets with one shockwave. The way I did this was with vehicles. If you go to a car park, I use the one near King's Cross Station in Camden. There'll be some stationary cars waiting. If there aren't eight, just steal a few more and bunch them all together. If you do this on a road, the cars have a tendency to just drive off, so that's why I chose a car park. Then just hit them with a viral hacking shockwave and you'll earn the trophy. It doesn't need to be the X hack. You can press square, triangle or circle. Just make sure you hold the button down. Another character based trophy, this time you'll need a spy. You automatically recruit one of these while making the city of Westminster defiant. Now all you need is five Albion guards together. The easiest way I found to do this was at the Tower of London in Tower Hamlets. This is for two reasons. One, it's a loop so you can run around in a circle and two, the Albion guards won't fire on you straight away, meaning you can run this loop and get a bunch of them to follow you without being fired upon. Once you've done this and have at least five following you, simply bring up the weapon wheel and choose the spy watch ability, then hit R1. This will send out a shockwave and disable all of the guards' guns at once. As long as you hit five, you'll get the trophy. For this character-specific trophy, you'll need a football hooligan, and of course, you can get one of these by making a Borough Defiant. This time, it's Islington and Hackney. This one's nice and simple. Once you have a football hooligan, go to any red area and select the Rally Cry ability from the weapon wheel. This will call three minions to help you out. They will take anyone on that tries to come for you, so just stand back and let them neutralize three people. Now these guys aren't particularly tough, so chances are you won't neutralize three with your first use of Rally Cry. You won't be able to do another one straight away either. It's kind of one per area. So just go to another red area and do it again. The three neutralizations don't need to be from one rally cry, so don't worry about that, just three in total. This is another character specific trophy, but this time you'll need to find your operative yourself. Unfortunately, you need an artist or street artist, as these are the ones with a paintball gun and their spawns are random. Street artists will spawn near graffiti. There's a piece of graffiti down the side of the Tate Modern, so you could look for a street artist while looking for a video game designer. I actually found a street artist stood outside the dead sec hideout so they can spawn anywhere, but near graffiti is best. You'll see them trying to scribble over the top of the graffiti that's already there. Once you have one, go to a clan Kelly hideout or down the side of the Tate Modern again. Next to the graffiti, there's always some goons stood there. To find out if a certain red area is clan Kelly, hover over it on the map and it'll tell you clan Kelly, Albion, etc. Now just shoot Clan Kelly members five times in the head with the paintball gun. You don't need to kill the members and it doesn't need to be the same clan member, just five headshots will do. For this trophy you'll need a law enforcement officer, so a police officer which you can find at Buckingham Palace or an Albion Guard which you can find everywhere. You actually recruit an Albion Guard during the story mission inside Albion so you can just wait until then. Either way, once you have one just start taking civilians down. They don't need to be hostile. Just press square near them, do this five times, you'll arrest them, you're done. The first thing you'll need for this trophy is the Deep Profiler ability. This can be purchased from the skills menu and will cost you 25 points. The reason for this is that Royal Guards always dislike DeadSec, so you can't just recruit one. You need to use Deep Profiler to gain favour with them first. Next, go to Buckingham Palace and select a Royal Guard with L1 and hold R1 to save them to your potential recruits. Next, go to the team page and find them, then press triangle to use Deep Profiler. Select one of their leads and then go to that location and complete whatever needs doing. At this point, the recruitment mission should start for them and you can just recruit them the normal way. Once you have them fully recruited, select them and go back to Buckingham Palace and step through the gates and into the restricted area. That's it. This is the final character specific trophy and for this one, you'll need a living statue. I actually have a separate video for this trophy, so please check the description for it. The short version is that you need to find a living statue, get a level 5 wanted level while using one, then use the statue emote ability that they have to lose the police. Like I said, it's all in the separate video. For this trophy, you need to finish Kick Up Intermediate Challenge 1. To get to Intermediate 1, you need to complete the 6 beginner ones first. To start the challenges, you need a football. You can find them all over London, just look for the blue football symbol on your map. There's actually one on the left side of the grass outside the dead sec hideout near the Houses of Parliament. I hated these kick-up challenges. 
They're basically quick time events, but using R1, L1, R2, L2. It just doesn't feel natural. Just press the prompts as they appear on screen and score the amount of points needed to move on. If you stop the QTE in the white area, it's just one point. If you do it in the green area, it's more. The more times you hit the green area, the more points you'll accumulate, and it'll eventually turn purple to get a massive amount of points each time. It's not too bad in the end, it's just a bit jarring to get used to, but basically pass beginner 1-6, to six, then intermediate 1, and the trophy will unlock. For this trophy, I'm going to point you to the separate video that I've done. The link is in the description. You'll want to combine this trophy with the bottoms up trophy. I explain everything you need to know at the beginning of that video and show you where each location is. But essentially, you want to visit each dartboard in the game in one go using the same character to stop any glitches happening. Just make sure you actually finish the game of darts, or 301 as it's called, at each dartboard. Also, while in the pub, make sure to rob their safe if they have one. They're usually good for about a grand. Similar to Bullseye and Bottoms Up, I have a separate video for this trophy too. There are 47 paced up locations in the game, and I show you where each one is in the video. Again, do this in one go with the same character to avoid glitches. Like Bullseye, once again, there's a separate video for this trophy. There are 26 drinks locations around the city, and you need to have a drink at each one for the trophy. And once again, do this in one go and with the same character to avoid glitches. Like I mentioned in Bullseye, make sure to loot every pub's safe. This will help towards the 100,000 for the Fresh Threads trophy. As you're driving around the city, you may notice little blue fox symbols on your map. These are parcel fox delivery points. When you interact with one, you can choose to start a parcel fox delivery mission. These are just basic delivery missions. You just need to get across the city to another parcel fox drop-off point and deliver the package. Now, the missions will have one or more of the following stipulations. There could be a time limit, a damage limit, or the police will come after you as soon as you start. For that reason, don't use the moped provided. Just steal a fast car and use that. You will be delivering to another drop-off point, so you can just keep chaining the missions together and get them done pretty quickly. You will be earning money from them too, so that's going to help towards the 100,000 that you need. No need to do more than the 20 needed for the trophy though. You'll get plenty of money elsewhere. You can do this with any operative at any time. Go to the team menu, choose a recruit, press edit, hover over their weapon and press edit again. Now choose a skin. Probably bubblegum and bullets is the cheapest one and you'll want to save that money for clothes later on And that's it trophy done This is similar to the previous trophy, but this time you need to buy a paint job for a car Only certain recruits have personal vehicles the spy you get from turning Westminster defiant has a personal vehicle So just use him same deal goes go to the team menu choose your spy press edit Then hover over their car and press triangle to edit it from there choose the cheapest paint job and you'll get the trophy. Right, now for the reason you've been saving all of that ETO. You should have around 100,000 after doing everything else, as long as you haven't been spending it. You should have been looking out for ETO on the map at all times and picking up as much as you can. You should have also gotten a fair bit from robbing safes in the pubs and doing parcel fox deliveries. You do also get quite a lot from all of the missions you do during the story as well. Getting to 100,000 is not as difficult as you may initially think as long as you start working on it from the beginning. Now when it comes to actually spending the 100,000 on clothes, use the same character for all purchases. Just go and spend the whole 100,000 all at once. This is obviously to avoid the reported glitches. And I will just mention before doing it, make a backup save just in case. Visit as many of the clothes shops as you need in London and buy whatever you like. Shirts, glasses, bags, all of it. Once you've spent 100 grand, the trophy will unlock. To unlock all upgrades, you need skill points. Lots and lots of skill points, 1300 to be exact. Now you'll get quite a few from finishing the story, but you will need to hunt the rest down yourself. The skill points will be marked on your map as a green square, and each one you find will give you 10 skill points. You want to be aware of these at all times and always go and grab them if they're nearby. Now don't worry about having to find them, once you make a Borough Defiant, they will all get marked on your map for that specific Borough. From there you can select them on your map, and you'll be able to pinpoint their exact location. Now when it comes to actually collecting them, some of them are just out in the open, but a lot of them will involve you using your Spiderbot. There are a lot more skill points in London than you actually need, so if you're finding one particularly difficult to reach, just move on. Now when it comes to actually spending your points in the tech menu, you can do this as you go. No need to do this all at once. 
Some of the abilities are just one-time purchases like Deep Profiler, but others have three upgrades and you'll need to purchase each one for the trophy. Literally, you need to buy everything. Again, if you're aware of this from the start, you'll be finished with this about the same time that you finished with everything else. This trophy ties into the previous one, Fully Kitted. You'll get this while doing all upgrades, so see Fully Kitted for more information. Find 50 audio logs. This may sound like it's going to be a pain, but you actually get over 30 audio logs from the story and side missions. So you'll only actually need to find 15 or 20 around London. In fact, there are five in the DedSec hideout. They'll get marked on your map with a little speaker symbol when you get close to them and will look like headphones when you go to collect them. There are lots of instances where there are audio logs near mission objectives, so finding the extra 10 to 15 or so that you need will be no problem. No need for a guide, just keep an eye on your map. Like with the skill points, you can select them on your map and pinpoint their exact location. Similar to oral history, you'll pretty much get all but three relics you need from story missions. There's also one in your safe house under the stairs, meaning you actually only need to find two relics. Now relics are a little different from audio logs. Some of them have multiple parts to them and they only count when they are whole. But again, some of the ones that you find will be whole to start with, like the one in the DedSec hideout. Same goes here as it did for audio logs. No need for a guide, just keep an eye out for the little package looking boxes on your map and make an effort to pick up as many as you can find. And that's the final trophy. If you watched all of this, thank you. Please let me know what you thought of this style of trophy guide in the comments below. I really do want to know. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.